Good evening. The Ayatollah Khomeini appears tonight to have come to full power in Iran, as he said he would, in another of those bloody convulsions that have recently swept the country. After two days of fighting between military units loyal to Prime Minister Shapur Bakhtiar and pro Khomeini forces, the military chiefs suddenly withdrew their support from Bakhtiar and proclaimed their neutrality. Within hours, word spread that Bakhtiar and all his ministers were resigning, leaving the government to Khomeini's provisional regime. We have reports from ABC correspondents Jerry King and Greg Dobbs. First Dobbs. Today's Blackfire Revolution was less than surprising after a view of how the people had fought the army last night. There were dozens of army jeeps and troop trucks burned out and overturned. And we saw eight British-made tanks like this destroyed, another two captured and working. One street fighter from last night told how Molotov cocktails destroyed the tank. And uh, would fire the truck and then shoot them after they came out from the tank. That was the only way which we been after the tank. With Molotov cocktail? Yes, with the Molotov cocktail. Today's fighting was equally fierce with equivalent results. Here, Tehran's pro-government riot police, defending their own headquarters, had superior firepower to their pro-revolution attackers. But there were more attackers, and apparently with a stronger commitment to win. They did. In fact, they routed and destroyed police stations all over the capital. Meanwhile, other major institutions were falling to the revolutionaries. There was this bloody and costly battle for Tehran's radio station. And within hours, successful attacks or advances on the TV station, the parliament, even the prime minister's palace. Some of today's worst fighting was at this army base in the city. Revolutionaries set it afire, moved in, then fought pitched battles with soldiers outside the wall. During all this, other revolutionaries went looting, procuring items, they said, for the Islamic Republic, taking special pleasure in doing so, since American military advisors once worked here with Iran's army. When the fighting finally stopped, people screamed in and out of this captured base, proudly displaying the weapons they used and those they seized. Also, though, sadly taking stock of what's happened to their nation. <laughs> Almost everywhere, the streets are now full of amateurs with guns. They are heroes, but also potentially a menace. The people flee at the Army's announcement late this afternoon to withdraw from the fray may be short-lived if those guns aren't eventually put away. Greg Dobbs, ABC News, Tehran.